let's see if we can now give ourselves a more tangible understanding of what's on the new SAT and how it might be different than SATs of the past. So right over here, I have a bullet point list of kind of the major features, the defining features of the new SAT. And starting up here are relevant words in context. And there's two important parts of that, relevant and context. And when we're talking about relevant words, these are words that you will actually see when you go to college or that you will use in your working life. There's kind of a, you know, people sometimes say something like, hey, that's an SAT word, sometimes referring to a word that hey, maybe it's just a hard word that is not so practical. What's different about the new SAT is that they're going to be relevant words, and not just relevant words in a vacuum, they're going to be in a context, in a situation where you might be editing a passage or reading something. So it's going to matter to understand what those words are. And once again, they're not going to be some, some kind of crazy words that you only memorize for a standardized test. And just as an example of that, I have, an I have a, a, a passage of relevant words in context. And this is going to be from the new SAT writing section. And the new SAT writing section, as you see, we're in context here. And this little four with a circle around it, this shows that, hey, this part of the passage is referring to Question four, and I'll, I'll look at this real fast. As Kingman developed as a painter, his works were often compared to paintings by Chinese landscape artists dating back to CE 960, a time when a strong tradition of landscape painting emerged in Chinese art. Kingman, however, and then the default right here is vacated from that, from that tradition in a number of ways. Well, vacated, once again, isn't a crazy word. It's a word that you will hear in everyday language, in college, and, and in work, but it sounds a little bit off. And you look at the ch choices here, evacuated, departed, retired. Once again, all words that you will see in college and you will see in life, and at least for this one, and my job here isn't to answer the SAT questions, but hey, this feels like he departed from the tradition. So I would have gone with that. But anyway, this isn't about doing the questions, but more seeing how these questions, uh, what they actually look like. These aren't crazy words that you would only just memorize for a test. These are useful words to know in life. And once again, we have a context of when we would use it. We would use it maybe to edit a passage like this. So the other major themes of the new SAT, command of evidence, command of evidence. So we're going to see in the writing, reading, and math sections to be able to look at either, it could be data, uh, and this could even be in the reading section. Hey, what kind of data can help us make different types of conclusions? Or, in, or even thinking about how we might rewrite something based on the data that's, that's relevant. And this is an example of it right over here. And once again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into this question. Uh, there's other videos we have where we do, exact exam do example problems. But this is interesting. You're seeing kind of data, evidence, and this isn't in the math section. So this is another example of something you might see or you will see on the new SAT. And the reason why that's important is because you will see this throughout life. It's not like reading or writing is somehow separated from data. All of these things happen together in the real world. And it might not just be data evidence. It could be looking at evidence, a, 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 an author's argument. So it could be written evidence of some sort as well. The essay, the optional essay on the new SAT, is going to be about analyzing a source. So uh, looking at uh, what's happening and analyzing where kind of the, the, the conclusions are coming from. And, and we can go into more depth in future videos on that. Now the math portion. This is a big deal that the new SAT, you know, classically the SAT had been associated with, hey, maybe it's a little bit trickier or things like that. But the new SAT really is focused on the things that you actually learn in school. So learn, learn in school, and it's even a subset of that. It's kind of the most important subset, especially for being college and life ready. So the sections or the types of problems you'll see are the heart of algebra. And this is really the core of algebra that really matters. Then you're going to see the passport to advanced math. And these are the skills that allow you to get ready, have the knowledge to get higher level math that you will take in college. Things sometimes, uh, uh, you know, so you're ready to take those pre-calculus, calculus, statistics courses that you might see in college. And then there's problem solving and data analysis. And once again, these are real world uh, types of data analysis things, things that you will see throughout college and in your, whole, in your entire life. So it's, it's focused on things you learn in school and things that are going to matter in college and life. Now another big theme, and this is across all of the sections, is real world context. These aren't just tricky problems in some type of a, a, a vacuum. These are going to be things that you're going to be seeing. I know I, I keep repeating that, but and you see that theme, that they're not just kind of a brain teaser type things. These are things that you will, you will see as you go through your college career. Analysis in science and social studies. 
So even though the sections are formally reading and math and writing, they're going to use those sections in order to touch on important topics in science and social studies. So you're definitely going to see a, a broader uh, a coverage of, of different types of domains in the new SAT. And this is one that I found really interesting. This notion of founding documents in great global conversation as being part of the SAT. So it's a really, uh, I would say, good incentive to get familiar with things like to get familiar with things like the um, uh, Gandhi's Quit India uh, speech or, or the Declaration of Independence or the Federalist Papers. You're going to see this type of thing in the new SAT in a reading passage or to kind of uh, judge, make some judgment about some things. And then the last bullet point here, this is just kind of a high level point, and this It emphasizes that this new SAT really is about what do you know, not having to think about, hey, do I guess, do I not guess, is that there's no penalty for wrong answers. In the past, there was a penalty for wrong answers, but now there's no penalty. So if you feel like you have a sense of something, or, or really even if you don't, you should at least try to answer every question that you get to. You shouldn't get into all the whole uh, gamesmanship of, okay, should I do it or should I not? So hopefully this gives you a sense of things. I have some other questions here that maybe make things a little bit more a little bit more tangible. Uh, this one right over here, this is kind of the, this would be the passport to advanced math right over here. You have a nonlinear system, but this is really useful. This is uh, some things that you will see in school and especially when you get to college. And then they have data analysis questions like this, which is very valuable as you uh, once again go into college and really almost any field you go into, you're going to have to do data analysis or things like this. So hopefully this gives you a, an overview and, 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 and encourages you to dive in. And the best way always to prepare for this is use the Khan Academy tools. Uh, take the practice test. Review the questions that you get really wrong or that you're not sure about. And then do as much deliberate practice as you need and the system will personalize to your needs so that you get the best, hopefully the best use of your time. Have fun.